Hello, YouTube. We are in a stock, ugly stock market where moves are fast and dramatic. And we can note that there have been two pump and dumps happening. The first one overnight where we gap up into the start of E-mini futures trading on Sunday night. And then this morning, we dump and pump, we pump and dump. Man, is this a sell the rep market or are we still looking for some glimmers of hope from the bulls? Things are starting to get really bad for big tech. We're down by hundreds of billions apiece from Apple down to Meta and even Tesla. The bleeding is starting to really accelerate in our leaders. So as we look at the chart today, we have to ask ourselves, we went a whole bunch of nowhere starting, uh, sorry, closing out Friday at 38.70 and currently being here at 3.57. We haven't really gone very far. We're pretty much where we started. So there's been a big push pull, but net net, not a whole lot has changed. As we're getting started, I'm going to ask you for a huge favor. If, a favor. if you could please smash that thumbs up, it would be greatly appreciated. So second thing I'm going to note here is that on the E-mini futures, we actually came up to our 50 DMA. So S&P does not have this test because it's just the cash market trading. We have, uh, do we have a higher high? Uh, we do, higher high, higher low. But when we look here to the E-mini futures, we have to recognize that not all trading happens between 9 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Sorry, 9.30 to 4. So uh, we got a 50 DMA test here. Uh, we're now closing lower than we opened, opening at 38.78. And that's pretty much the story. What else happened? Well, um, Apple and uh, sorry, to uh, just give a little bit more context here, being below the average is one thing. Uh, being in a bearish pattern is another. So if Santa Claus is going to come to town, well, he better bring the reindeer with him because we have to start moving higher right now. We need some guidance, need some clarity, and we need a clear path for liftoff. So in a bearish pattern with a bearish setup, um, is the market acting the way we would expect it to? Um, well, the S&P came down and actually poked below 380. And this is significant for me because when we did the weekend video, you'll remember that we uh, went through and actually analyzed where these uh, rays come from, these horizontal rays, green being support, red being resistance, white being important. And where are we right now? Well, we're right on an important area. So if we're on an important area or our May low at 380.54, and we're trying to recapture the December low here on the 12th at 381, we're back above it. Um, we have an inside bar and we also cracked 380. And this is important because if the low of the week has been established, we have to advance from here. Why? The close of the week, the month, and the year happens on Friday. And if we close below 384, we're closing in bear market territory. So even an inside bar, um, well, an inside bar in a downtrend is still not all that high. So we have to be very mindful of that. If the low of the week is in, I want to see the bulls advancing from here. And this is the evidence for why we should look for that. Not that this is my base case. Um, again, on the weekend, we went through and talked about exactly what I think is going to happen. Encourage you to watch that if you want. But if we go all the way back here to uh, the 15th of December, which is when we pretty much formed our low, if you look at the volume, uh, meaning, let me actually pull up one more chart here, CFTC data, there we go. Um, ever since the 16th, the largest candle on the day has been green every single session. So this is accumulation. But again, buying is buying, selling is selling. But we can understand where this buying came from by looking here to the CFTC futures, which we talked about on the weekend and also on the Friday stream. And we're now, now down here to a net contract short position of 160. We have not seen that since the week of October 14th when we had our October low. So this is short covering, which could lead into a rally or some long-term bulls stepping in to support this. So if shorts are just covering, which is what these green bars are, for it to go higher and reload short, um, we should be fizzling, right? Sideways is, is the new up. If this is initiation of long, so we want to take us higher, I uh, want to see them show up soon. Got to see Santa Claus dragging, dragging us higher. Otherwise, in a bearish tape, below averages, in a downtrend, it's nice that we're only down by 0 0.4. Uh, NASDAQ's down by 1.4. It's not really great. This is not what we want to see. If we're bulls, if we're bears, we're cheering, we're joyous, we are thrilled. The end of the year is going to be great for us. If we look here at a couple more charts to try to get some context, um, QQQ, man, it's already down 1.4. Um, sitting here at uh, the low of last week at 262, it's barely hanging on to a weekly higher low. It's about a 50 cent one. And if we look here to our monthly chart, oh man, we're still below the 50 monthly. Yes, with almost a bearish engulfing candle on, on, on the monthly. That is terrible. This is not bullish. Um, we're also closing at the low of the candle, which is not good. DXY, um, not really doing much. Still below the 50, trying to carve out a bottom. It's in an uptrend. It looks okay. The VIX, uh, bouncing all around. Uh, it's over 21 now. Trying to hold on to its uptrend. Let's see what it has. Here is where it starts to get spicy. And I say spicy because... 
When we look here to the two-year note or the two-year treasury note from the U.S. government on a one-week chart, what do we see? Well, we see that it's right here on an apex. An apex is when two lines meet, the red line and the green line. And right now, whoa. Um, it's trying to break bullish, right? That's uh, not good. It means inflation in the short term is expected to go higher or that the Fed's going to raise rates. This is the one that really catches my eye though. It's the 10-year treasury note. The 10-year note is now advanced uh, over 10% in two weeks. So from that same apex we looked at here on the two-year note, we're up by 10.3%. That is dramatic and it's causing a repricing and a lot of growth. And uh, there's a few reasons for this. Uh, part of it is that, uh, right, uh, Christine Lagarde is getting very hawkish, which means that uh, bonds are going to, and she's trying to raise interest rates basically, which means the US is not the only game in town anymore. In addition to that, we also have Japan, who is now coming off of 0% interest rates, which means that there is now areas where you can actually move your money. The US is still the best game in town. It is not the only game in town, right? There's more games out there. So I can't even spell. There we go. Only. On um, Tara, there are reasonable alternatives. And what are those? Well, uh, China was opening up. Uh, we know they're open to the world now. So what happened? Well, FXI or the China uh, char China large cap is up by 4.75% today. People don't stop trading or investing. They just rotate their money. They move it to different sectors. They move it to what's working. We can also note here and see that EEM or emerging markets is also up. It's up on the day by about 1.4. So Yes, if you're laser focused on tech stocks in the US, which a lot of people who are uh, who watch these videos are, again, retail traders, that's where you might not recognize there are other areas out, th out there that are doing quite well. And one more time, if you wouldn't mind, please smashing that thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. All right, so um, that's what happened today. We're noticing a lot of things which are currently starting to break down. We're now gonna leave you with one more pivot here or looking at some tech stocks. So we're gonna look over here at Apple and uh, we're looking at Apple because um, as of uh, the 22nd close, um, Apple was down by $810 billion in market cap on the year. It's still sitting here just over uh, 2 trillion. It's the only one still over two. When we look to our, uh, our June low on, on, on Apple here, uh, 129, we pierced it. We got to 128.7. So what that means is that we've now violated the June low. We, we recaptured it. And uh, so far we have a weekly failed breakdown uh, versus last week at 129.6. Uh, so as much as people talk about Tesla, Apple is the king. It is the only $2 trillion company. It is why it is the biggest block. So where Apple goes, the market usually follows. We have to pay attention to it. What happens at 128 to 130, which are basically our June lows and our low last week, does it hold? Um, do we go down? Do we go up? It really matters. This is the last soldier. It's the last one. Microsoft still looks good, um, but I think that Apple is still the king. We got to pay attention to it. Um, so there we go. Uh, one more thing, sorry, too. And the reason why I'm a little bit more concerned than I would be normally, trust me, I love Apple. I have almost all their products. I'm a huge fanboy. However, um, it's okay to fundamentally like a company. Technicals, technicals tell us when to buy and sell. And ever since our June low, I'm noticing selling or distribution, not accumulation. It's mostly distribution. So the last soldier is starting to get a, a chink in the armor. And yeah, Tes uh, Tesla's down by 11. Um, it's not even one of the biggest blocks anymore. It's shoved all the way over to here. It's, it's just tanking. Look for the theme, though. Look at these blocks. Trillion dollar company on the one day, on the one week, on the one month. Here's where the theme becomes much more obvious, right? Ah, well, it's really red, Justin. Yep, it's really red. Same thing here on a three month. Same thing here on year to date. That's the, that's, that's the theme. We talked about it on the weekend review as well. It's getting pretty bloody out there. So we're going to start wrapping up and we're going to talk about one more stock. You probably know which one. Um, the people who want to swim upstream are going to be Tesla shareholders right now. Um, what they don't understand is that objects in motion tend to stay in motion. So when we understand that we are fish swimming upstream, if we're expecting to be able to time the bottom, why? Well, Tesla stock is headed for its worst month, quarter, and year on record. Um, this, this was only from about an hour or so ago, but the numbers are even worse now. So when we think about this, it's a psychology. Um, on that same day, we showed you the screenshot of the other stocks being down, Tesla to Meta, sorry, Apple to Meta. Tesla on its psychology chart was at 124. It's now at about, I don't know, like 109, something like that. Yeah, one, one, oh, 1086, my apologies. Um, when we look here to the chart, until I start seeing panic, capitulation, and maybe even some anger specifically at Elon, I don't think the stock is going to move higher. Um, I think sideways to sideways is the new up and down is the same down. So when we look here to Tesla, I just want to leave you with one more thing because I want people to be mindful of, not, not that I'm trying to say like uh, Tesla or Elon or anyone is not great. 
I like the car. I like the in innovation. It's one of the big, big advancements we've made in the last uh, 15, 20 years. But we're here to make money, right? So when we look here at the volume profile to its IPO, you can't even see the most, most recent price action. The average volume paid, going back to its IPO, is right around 10 bucks. There could potentially be a lot more downside on this baby. So with that said, if you want to uh, watch the weekend deep dive, deep dive, that should now be queued up. And if not, if you want to come trade with me, Justin from YouTube, to see how I take all these notes, formulate a plan, and then buy and sell stocks, you can join us at thealgo.com. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thank you.